Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. Back with the one and only Anna Kelly. How you doing, Anna? I'm doing great. So good to be here with you today. Well, this is going to be an uplifting episode. Our first episode of the day was kind of just realistic. Hey, we're in for some tough times, stagflation, recession, all of that. But now what I want to talk about is how wealth destruction, and I think we are going to see record wealth destruction. And by many accounts, we're already seeing it. The dot-com crash, which again, took 80% of my wealth, had roughly about, I think it was nine, um, was it $9 trillion in wealth destruction uh, overall, when you kind of add it all together, all the companies going poof, whatever it was. I don't know if it's nine trillion or nine billion. Anyway, big number. And we've already seen about that number, right? We've seen SPACs go boom. We've seen mean stocks go boom. We've seen all, you know, this, I think the NASDAQ's down 30% now. Yes. Uh, but more is coming. But what I want to talk about now is the other side. Because what you're going to be able to do in the other side, assuming you have prepared, you will be able to thrive. And that's what I keep preaching. I've talked about winter is coming. I've talked about winter is here. It's the prepared that can thrive. And again, yes. there's life-changing life changing wealth to be created. So let's talk about that. Yes, absolutely. I agree 100%. And you know, there's, there's an adage, which rings true, is that you try to buy low and sell high, right? And as we've talked about on the show, it's really difficult to time that, but you can watch the signs and say, are we closer to the high or are we closer to the low, right? And the key is don't catch a falling knife, as they say. So as the markets are tanking and as real estate starts to show some underlying pain in certain markets, it's not the time to go, oh, now we're at the bottom, let's go in. You start to kind of wait for that pain and you see that wealth destruction. And then as, start, as things start to come back up a little bit, then you go, okay, now we're on the upswing but we're still way low. Let's try to go and, and let's start to buy. But you have to be watching those signs. That's why we do the show to say, we're heading off the cliff. We're heading toward the bottom. Are you prepared? Are you preserved? So you mentioned you lost 80% in the dot-com bubble. I lost a significant, about 75% during the 2009 Great Recession. Um, was totally blindsided, right? We've learned through that. We're not going to be blindsided this time. We're, we're preparing. We're locking in low rate interest debt. We're, we're selling properties at near the hive. We're getting liquid and we're watching for, for when it's time to go in and do great deals where deals just seem to be very, very plentiful and, and sellers are very, very motivated. Yeah. Yeah. What I want to tell people about it, it, it first and foremost, it doesn't pay to be a hero, right? A 15% a haircut is nothing right? right. Uh, you're you're going to be able to get some real, I mean, Amazon, I, I, I read it a month ago, but I think this is correct. Like during the peak of the dot-com craziness, I think Amazon at the time was like $118. I think it went as low as like eight or nine, or maybe it was 18 or wow. 19. So it went down roughly 90% if my memory serves. Again, great companies. Just it, no fault of the company. The company didn't change one iota. It's just out of favor and risk right. is off. I mean, uh, I think Apple it, for a time was the most valuable company on the planet. Yes. Who's to say that Apple couldn't be cut in half, assuming risk off, uh, you know, a, a China shutdown. So, you know, they have a quarter hiccup on supply. I'm not calling for any of this. I'm just saying crazy things happen. Yes. And as Warren Buffett has taught us, right? Warren Buffett went in and brought Apple. I guess Apple had a hiccup, I don't know, six months ago. And he's like, hey, I kept buying hand over fist. I'd have bought more, but price went up. There right. will be buyers. And again, a stock that gets cut in half sometimes is not about the company. It's about the market, Yes, right? There's a market risk, sector risk, company risk. And yes. you, know, you just don't know. So uh, what do you think about that? I agree. And, and one thing that tends to happen when you start to head toward these, you know, bear market runs where the stock market starts to, look, to, to really crash, you know, 20 to 30 percent or more is what you first start seeing is all of these um, value stocks really start to crater. And people say, OK, th things are, hurt, are, are falling. So we're going to jump off the cliff, but we're going to put a parachute on by investing in these blue chips and these large cap stocks. And so they tend to run up the prices of these very large, what we talk about, these safe companies like Apple, Amazon, et cetera, Coca-Cola. They really get run up because people are leaving the stuff that they think is going to fall and fail, and they put all their money into the blue chips. Then what happens is when people get really nervous and the market's really nervous, then they say, uh-oh, we've jumped off the cliff. Now we need to like jump onto a bigger parachute and sell. 
And so, and, and they tank all of the real all of the market with um, those companies and those sectors that are going off the cliff. So, you know, first you saw NASDAQ and you see tech stocks get hammered. Then it's the small, you know, value caps. And then, it, then it's the growth and the big blue chip caps. And so they all tend to go down just because of the overall market panic. That doesn't mean that the fundamentals of all those companies are suddenly down 75% of where we thought that they were. Yeah. I think I think the other thing that happens again again in a in a bear market, um, bad actors get punished. And what do I mean by a bad actor? I mean traders who do uh, who are really on leverage and really don't know what they're doing. Yes. And what can happen in that environment is actually their winners, like Apple, get sold because it's the only thing with liquidity. Yes, right? that's it, so true. It it is. Right. They're not going to sell their losers because they're already down 90 percent. They're going to sell Apple because it's down four uh, percent. Yeah, that's so, a really good point. Yeah. So, again, bear markets can really get people who are on margin and liquidity and really cause outside moves with no real company information. Again, what people need to realize is in the stock market, you have market risk, sector risk, sector risk. Think Snap, right? Snap came out. Pr Snap releases earnings, says all is good. Anna, 30 days later, they have to pre-announce they're changing their guidance. When was the last time we saw a company pre-announce negative information? They are coming. So right. sector risk. Snap does that. Guess what happens to Twitter and Meta and you know uh, Pinterest? They all get hammered. Right. That's sector risk, right? And then there's right. stock risk like Snap. So um, absolutely. It, it, and listen, it, I, I'm not an expert on stocks. If you've listened to me before, I've, I've largely gotten out of the stock market. I have a few stocks that I still you know, have dabbled in and put a little money into. But generally speaking, what you've got to get really good at, and, it, and it's easier said than done, is you've got to look at stock by stock, at their PE ratio, at their debt, um, you know, and, and are they close to being a zombie company or can they cover their debt with their current, you know, income that's coming in? Where, where is their income as a percentage of, of the debt that they have today? And so you've got to watch all of that. And if you listen to guys like Dalio and Buffett, Dalio says, if you're really good and you pick the right stocks, expect a 3% return over the next 10 years. If you're really <laughs> good, right? So that's not Warren good. Buffett. Wells Fargo, they expect a lost decade over the next 10 years. But if you go in at the right time and you happen to pick the right stocks, you could make a killing. But how good are you? And if you're not, then you need to talk to advisors. You need to watch these things. And maybe you go into an index fund in some sectors that aren't being hammered as hard or that you know that the fundamentals of that sector are still really good, mm -hmm. despite the fact that a lot of other maybe newer companies in that sector are really starting to struggle. Um, so there is a risk. I would bet again on real estate all day long, yeah. um, personally, but I will invest some in the stock market um, when I think we've hit the bottom and we're we're starting to come back up. Yeah, uh, yeah. That, that for me, that's likely. I, I have I actually moved money into Charles Schwab, which happens to just be an account I've had since I was twenty. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll do some nibbling. Prop. It's not going to happen. And for me, we've already seen. PE uh, collapse, right? We, yes. Progression, we went from 26 to about 18. Historical average is 16. So we have more to go. Yes. What I am waiting for is earnings cuts. And actually, I said on Monday, I'm waiting for all pre-announcements because I was an accountant last time we went through all of this and pre-announcements, you know, throw kitchen sink quarters. You just do all of those things. I expect a bunch of pre, I expect like, I expect either Tesla or Apple or maybe both to have to pre-announce, right? When you get a top tier, like a number one company pre-announce, it will wreck the market. Yeah. Wreck. So we'll see. I, I don't know. We'll see if that happens. But yeah, pre-announcements are coming. And where I was going, this is not only multiple, we're going to see earnings. I think the S&P 500, last time I checked, was estimated to do $5.65 a share. There's no chance. They're going to whack that. It'll be somewhere in the low fours. And when you take right. a lower PE on lower earnings, stocks have to come down to something like, 3300 3350 it's there's just more pain ahead but again this is not a bad news then you'll be able to pick up the companies got un, un, that got hurt maybe apple's a great buy at 99 or whatever it's going to be so uh, absolutely yeah. yeah and you might want to subscribe you know there's there's some publications on um on seeking alpha on market watch that kind of do these deep dives of the different stocks and tell you kind of 
here's what we're seeing. Here's some areas that still have some value. They still have good dividends. They still have solid fundamentals. If you don't have an advisor or broker, you know, those might be some things that you can look at. I'm starting to watch those things. So again, I'm, I'm pretty well out of the markets, but I'm like this, I recognize that this could be the opportunity of a lifetime. And so I'm starting to do a little bit of that research and due diligence to say, if I'm going to put some money aside from real estate, you know, what companies do I want to invest it in? But I'm I'm more excited about real estate, right? Because I, I can beat S&P returns all day long with easy, small rental properties. It's just, I'm going to beat the markets all day long. And I don't have to worry about, have I found the bottom? Have I found the top? I'm just going to buy real estate, do great deals, no matter what market I'm in. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to hold it and wait and, and watch as I develop equity and cash flow and tax benefits. And yeah, cash flow day one down. is key. Yeah. Yeah. The whole idea of 3% a year is laughable. Right. right? That, that is so easy to beat. Uh, it does take work. You Again, what I'm telling all my students is only do great deals. Yes. Right. It, the, I, the market's changing, right? The FOMO of buyers is gone. Now yeah. we have FOMO of sellers. And uh, I was talking to another expert the other day, and he saw something that I haven't seen since 2011 or 12. First words of the MLS listing, motivated seller. All yes, caps. I've started to notice that more and more. Mm-hmm. It's coming. It's coming, right? There are yes. people that are over leveraged. They had short-term debt. They were. Ch- I've been warning you against doing flips. I mean, like if you're flipping above the meat, like 2X the median, whew, good luck. Right. Absolutely. It's, the market changed. And uh, we've been warning again, none of this is stock market advice. I gave a bunch of examples about Apple. Those were just examples of numbers yes. I, I had out of the top of my head. Do your own research. Uh, Seeking Alpha is a lot of fun. I, 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 I'm on that site. Yeah. I don't know, almost every day. So they have some great stuff there. So, yeah, they uh, do. again, though, real estate is my thing. It's my jam. Uh, I do believe you can easily beat 3%. In fact, I won't do a deal this year unless it's 8% or better. Uh, I actually will likely build some ADUs that will be somewhere between 10 and 12%. So there's yeah. plenty of opportunities out there. Do the work, do the research, only do great deals. And again, don't be in a rush. Don't right. be, some people have money in their pocket and they're like, I got to deploy it. And we're going to talk about that in episode three is cash truly trash. Uh, but before we do, Anna, where can people find you? Great. You can find me here every Wednesday and on my playlist. You can find me on social media at Anna Kelly REI Mom. My website is reimom.com. And if you're an accredited investor looking to invest in apartment communities where we make an impact, you can find me on greaterpurposecapital.com. Awesome. Thanks, Anna. Thank you.